This is one of two new Poco phones. This is the X3 Pro. So I've already reviewed the X3 NFC. And this is essentially the same exact phone, but it has faster UFS 3.1 storage, a quicker chipset, and it does actually have a downgrade in the camera department with our main camera. It's not 64 megapixels anymore. It is a 48 megapixel main sensor. So we have the same large 5,160 milliamp hour battery. My vision here has eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. This is what you'll find inside the box of the Poco X3 Pro. We have a TPU case that fits it perfectly, some stickers, user guide, warranty card, USB cable, and our 33 watt charger, which will take just over an hour to fully charge the phone. So looking now at the build and the design, so deja vu here, if you've seen videos or my review of the X3 NFC, then really identical. It's exactly the same, just, just the minor changes, the chipset and then the main camera. So here in the back, we have the Poco branding and you can see that it picks up different light there and reflects and it doesn't look too bad, but I wish the branding wasn't so obvious. At least it doesn't stand out too much here with this one. So this backing is plastic, okay? The frame around the outside also plastic. We have the same side fingerprint reader. And as mentioned, I mean, it's all exactly the same here with this. So the unlocking speed is quite quick. You can see when I touch that, that is very, very quick. That's under a second. And the animation is also quite fast there. Faster than the X3 NFC, thanks to the faster Snapdragon 860 that this one has within it. Now the screen bezels, you can see there, there's a little bit of a chin and the side, we've got the 120 hertz screen and more on that later on with the 240 hertz touch sampling rate as well. And on the side here is our SIM tray slot. So this does have a gasket around it. Up the top, our IR transmitter, secondary mic, and this little port here is for the secondary loudspeaker. So the earpiece, and then it ports out the side there giving us the dual speakers, which is great to have in a phone like this. So this frame is all plastic around the outside. Now the thickness of this, if you're wondering, it is 9.4 officially a millimeter. So it's a little thicker and it does weigh 215 grams, this phone. So yes, it is a little chunky and it's a little heavy, but you do have to remember that it has that very large battery capacity in it, which of course is 5,160 milliamp hours, which is a fairly decent size and does offer good battery life, especially at the 120 hertz. So right down the bottom here, we have a Type-C port, so it does not support video out. This is USB 2 speeds, sadly. Microphone, the loudspeaker, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack there, which is great to have on a phone. And apart from that chipset, which is the Snapdragon 860, as I mentioned at the start, the change here is the main camera, which is right here. So this one is 48 megapixels. It does have, of course, the 4-in-1 pixel binning, but it's not as good as you'll find out later on as the 64 megapixel sensor we had on the X3, we have in the X3 NFC. Now this one has an f1.79 aperture. We have an eight megapixel ultra wide f2.2, two megapixel macro and a two megapixel depth camera. So yes, they're still giving us those two megapixel cameras, unfortunately, and I really wish they didn't do this. Now, both of those have an aperture of f2.4, and the front facing cutout camera, this one is 20 megapixels with an f2.2 aperture. Now having a look at our screen here, this one is IPS, full HD plus resolution, 120 hertz max. The touch response rate is 240 hertz. And I've noticed touch response is very good throughout the time I have been using this particular phone. Now when you take a look at say wide images, for example, what we're showing, what I'm showing you right now, that at certain angles you will see, especially around the cutout, that it does have a dimmer pixels around this, so it's not a uniformed white there. Now, an AMOLED panel or OLED would be, and that is just one thing. The blacks, of course, don't look quite as deep as they would on an OLED panel. Now, in direct sunlight, with its 459 nits that I'm measuring, you can still make it out just, but it is a little bit more difficult than some of those other screens out there that do have brightnesses well over 1,000 nits this one is half of that. It's an okay screen and well fitting for the price tag of this phone and great that it's 120 hertz. So our fingerprint unlocking is working great. I'm impressed with the speed of this one that it's only just, well, under a second, really quick. Face unlocking as well is working well, no problems with that. Now the things to point out with this particular phone that if I do plug it in right here, you will see that we have a status LED. At the top, it's just a tiny little light 
but it's good to have this. A lot of phones drop that status LED and it's there. And the earpiece is slightly off centered with this particular model, just like the X3 NFC. After all, they're really identical phones. Now it is running Android 11 here. We've got MIUI 12 still. We don't have 12.5 just yet. And the performance, very smooth of the ROM, but I have noticed that some areas don't actually run at the 120 hertz, even though I have that set with our display settings under here. You've got that option that you can override it by default. It's set to 60 hertz, but you keep it on the 120 hertz. We've got a large battery, and after all, you're paying for that performance, so you might as well keep it on that. So what areas don't run? at 120. So I've noticed that when you scroll through, for example, notifications here, that is definitely not 120 frames per second that that has been rendered. So you will notice just in some apps and areas that it's a bit of a dynamic refresh rate that they have, that certain applications, like for example, YouTube will only be running at 60. They don't need to run it and force it to 120 frames per second. So that's where we get some battery savings, but you do notice it. It's a little jarring to go from 120 to 60. You will definitely pick up on that. Now, multitasking, performance, everything else does seem quite quick and smooth and fluid to go through your different apps there. And depending on what you're doing, you don't normally see any lag come through and it is quick and you definitely notice the difference, say from the X3 NFC with the Snapdragon 732 to go now to the 860 is a nice leap in performance. Now, when you first power on this phone, you will be greeted with a lot of bloatware. So there's a lot of junky applications that you will have to go through and probably uninstall because you don't even use them or need them. So you will see that, yeah, Amazon's on there. There's all sorts of other things that will come up. Free storage, we get about 111 gigabytes on first boot with the 128 gigabyte version that I have here. And you can see that this, at the time of this video, is the latest firmware that I have on this. And those are the bloatware applications that I removed. So I counted like about 22, 21 bloatware apps a total of 142 gigabytes, which is a lot. Now the ROM at this time of this video isn't 100% stable. There's one thing that has sometimes crashed on me, which has been this MIUI Power Keeper. So that's popped up with a couple of errors and I'm sure patches and firmware updates will fix this. This has ha happened a few times to me when I seem to be recording video for some reason. And yes, you will see this, there are system app advertising, okay? So if you were to install an application, you will get this message pop up, an advert in that. Now, there is a way around, I think, to actually disable that, but I'm just reviewing it as is out of the box. So this is a big step up in performance over the Snapdragon 732G powered X3 NFC. So the X3 Pro getting close to 500,000 points here with Antutu, very decent score, and you can see a big bump up, especially in that GPU performance. So if you game a lot, this is where this phone comes recommended over the X3 NFC, because it is simply just so much faster and better for games. Very quick UFS 3.1 storage here. So the storage, yes, has improved. That's another spec bump there that we get with this particular model. Very good, as you can see, those sequential reads, random reads and writes are also excellent. So very fast there. And again, bear in mind that this is a 128 gigabyte version. So the 64 gigabyte model may be a little bit slower there. Camera 2 API level 3 support is excellent. That means look out for some Gcam ports if you wanted to improve on the photo quality. We do have a wide Vine level 1 cert here, which is great. That means Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Disney Plus, all going to work in HD, full HD. And the GPS works as expected here with the Snapdragon 860 maximum. Accuracy of three meters, very, very good average signal strength. It's always up in the greens there, so excellent. Follows you around, tracks you in town, in your car without any issues. The wireless is quick, but it tends to cap out about 160 megabits per second. Now, if you need it faster for your downloads with Wi-Fi, a five gigahertz band that is, Wi-Fi AC, then you do need a flagship then to surpass these kind of speeds. But still very good average speeds, good average speeds at my lower point there with slightly lower signal test, it did very well. What about the battery life? So running at 120 hertz, this test is a fixed battery life test that continually loops until it gets to 20% from 100% battery at 200 nits calibrated the screen brightness was. And we're getting almost 11 hours, which is quite good for, of course, 120 hertz. Now, if you run it at 60 hertz, it will go a bit longer. Now, what does this translate into? Real world use, you are looking at around seven to eight hours of on-screen time. So for heavy users out there, this phone should do the job, 
make it through a full day. And then the battery will fully charge in here from 12% to 100. It only took me 61 minutes, which is very quick for a 5,160 milliamp hour battery, 33 watt charging. Audio performance now. So yes, it supports our analog 3.5 millimeter. Now the quality out of this is very clean. It's crisp, it's loud, and I do like it. They are producing a really, really good, I think for the price quality for those headset lovers out there that still are holding on to their 3.5 millimeter tech, which I am, I prefer it. Anyway, the loudspeakers on this. So one down with firing one here at the top. The earpiece is quite a good earpiece. Voice calls sound good on this. Yes, I have placed some calls. It is a phone after all. And the call quality is excellent. I've had no issues with that at all. So here's a sample now of the loudspeakers at 100% volume and they are loud. They are not the richest I have heard. They could have maybe a little bit more bass to them, but overall I think for the price again, they are good speakers. Gaming performance, so PUBG, this one I can run with the extreme frame rate option and in HD, if I try to select the other settings, it comes up with that network connection not initialized, which I don't know what they're talking about because I am connected to my network here. PUBG is running very well, really smooth, as you'd expect for that N22 score we got for the GPU was quite good. So a definite step up over the X3 NFC, of course, with this power from the Snapdragon 860. Adreno 640 graphics, really, really smooth. So I'll just slow down here and get off the bike, in fact, and just have a look down my scope just to show you. That. Looking around here, to look at how smooth this is. Really, really good. Very smooth. And down the scope here, no lag. And probably the most demanding game, which is Genshin Impact. I did set this to lower settings. So what I did is put it onto the medium resolution render and then 60 frames per second just to keep that frame rate up. So it performs well, very, very good. It's fluid and I'm not really noticing any problems like lag or huge stutters. So great gaming performance for this. You could even step up these settings and run higher settings, which will visually look a little bit better, but then of course more possibility of lags. So what I'm gonna do now is game for one hour and see, will it end up overheating? Will it get too hot? Will I see throttling or any problems? Okay, so it has been one hour now of gaming, and yes, it does feel reasonably warm. Quite warm, in fact, getting up to almost 50 degrees. Well, in fact, it hit 50 just on the front of the glass here, so hot to the touch. And on the back of it, we are looking at a maximum temperature. There is a hot patch right here, which I will just go over. That is, well, about 50 degrees, just shy of 50 degrees. Now, my ambient temperatures in this room are around about 21 degrees. So this is our front facing camera with vlog footage we get 1080p maximum 30 frames per second and it does have electronic image stabilization. Now the audio bitrate is only 96 kilobits per second so we've seen this with other phones from Xiaomi and I hope that they can release a firmware update that will give us at least 192 kilobits per second would be a little bit better for the audio quality. Overall for 1080p footage it's not actually too bad at all. It's quite detailed and sharp enough. It does look reasonably good. So have a look at the rear cameras now. 4K 30 frames per second now reasonably good bitrate for 4K and we do have electronic image stabilization. This is one thing that the Redmi Note 10 Pro does lack with its 4K video and we have it here thanks to I think the Snapdragon 860 that allows it. It does at least have the power to apply that electronic image stabilization. A little bit of panning data as I move around. You can probably see that coming through. So it could be a little bit smoother there and better optimized. And then that audio bit rate, as I mentioned, it sounds just a little scratchy to me. So I'm gonna jog ahead and you can see that the electronic image stabilization, it's not perfect, but it is doing a good job to remove all the shakes and tremor. Let's have a look at ultra wide video now. So we do get a lot more in the shot, however the quality is not as good as the main camera. It looks a little bit more washed out, the edges show quite a bit of blurring too. And only 1080p 30 with this one maximum that we can get out of the ultra wide. And I'll just jog ahead to demonstrate that electronic image stabilization. It's doing a reasonable job, I have seen better.
Okay, so essentially, as I mentioned at the start, really, this is the Poco X3 NFC, and they've just given it a spec bump. So much faster storage, very, very quick. That's almost three times the speed of the Poco X3 NFC. When we look at the sequential reads, that is. And then the randoms are a lot faster too as well. And then the chipset performance, huge step up. Huge step up from the Snapdragon 860 compared to the 732G. So this is really for the gamers out there. You will notice this performance, like Snapdragon 860 delivers. Definitely, I think it does with the gaming performance there because PUBG is really smooth. It is running pretty much flawless there. Genshin Impact, even with a higher setting selected, will run really well on this phone. But there is a trade-off. It does get a little warm. It gets up to 50 degrees Celsius. And bear in mind that I gamed with the phone without any case on it. So if you use a case, it will be probably two or three degrees warmer there and if you're in a hot climate. So the charge time, it's good. Just over an hour for that very large battery. Battery life, 120 hertz, can go for around about seven to eight hours of on-screen time. That again is good. That's decent battery life we're getting out of this. And then the main camera, well, it's a bit of a downgrade, isn't it? Because the 64 megapixel IMX582 we had in the X3 NFC, I believe takes a better still than what we have with the 48 megapixel in this one. They could have done something a little bit more with the ultra wide, two two megapixel cameras on there still is sad to see. We don't really need those at all. So overall, for the price, for the gamers out there, it is a solid offering, okay? It just, maybe they could have done a little bit more. But we have the Poco F3. So I will have my review up and coming of the Poco F3. So do stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you back in the next one.